In this video, we'll learn how centrifugal pumps are used in the HVAC industry and how they work, including how to control them using a VFD. Here is a centrifugal and suction pump that we have cut open to show you the impeller spinning at 20 hertz it has a VFD connected to it to control the speed of the motor based on the demand of the flow in the system, whether it's a heating hot water system, chilled water system, condenser water system. The VFD will control flow based on something like a differential pressure controller sending a signal to the VFD to speed up to 40 hertz or whatever can be any number here because the demand on the system has grown and they need more GPM and as the demand increases the VFD will send a signal to the motor to speed up like here this is full speed so they're getting the full GPM to the system which probably means that all the air handler coils fan coils all the control valves are open wide. It's a very hot day. They want chilled water at full flow. And then as the demand falls off, as the system becomes cooler, the system will once again send a signal to the end suction pump motor to slow down. And then when the demand is dropped off at its lowest point, this impeller will spin at its lowest speed, whatever that setting may be, and you'll have the minimum flow of GPM. What does a HVAC centrifugal pump look like? There are many manufacturers that make centrifugal pumps for the HVAC industry, but basically they all function the same way and with the same purpose in mind, and that's to move a fluid through pipes and equipment while overcoming the friction. Although the colors may vary by manufacturer, the parts are similar. Centrifugal pumps have few moving parts with minimal wear during normal operations. There are two main components, the motor, which drives the pump, and the pump, which contains the impeller, the propulsion vanes that pull and push the fluid. The motor takes electrical power and converts it into mechanical energy that moves the fluid through the pipe and equipment. The pump has an inlet where it sucks in the fluid and an outlet where it pushes the fluid out through the system. Parts of a centrifugal pump. Pumps are relatively a simple piece of equipment when compared to other HVAC equipment. Starting with the motor, we have the motor casing which is rated for various duties such as open drip proof, ODP, totally enclosed, fan cooled, TEFC. Motors can also be inverter duty rated so that a variable frequency drive, VFD, can vary the speed of the motor to match the load. The motor has a shaft that extends into the pump portion where it attaches to the impeller. This can be a direct connection or by a coupling. The impeller is made up of vanes that rotate to impart energy to the water. The spinning vanes create a centrifugal force, throwing the water from the rotating impeller. The water discharged by the impeller is thrown by centrifugal force into the spiral-shaped volute, which is the housing surrounding the impeller. Pumps are available with various impeller sizes. Each size provides a different amount of flow and head. The pump may come with the option of an 7.5 inch, 8 inch, 8.5 inch, 9 inch, 9.5 inch impeller. To change the flow rate of an existing pump, you can trim the impeller to make it smaller or replace the impeller with a larger one if the pump isn't already using the largest impeller for that pump model. Disassembling the pump, we see that the motor has a fan to keep it cool when running. The motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy 
and spins the shaft. See our video on how motors work. Attached to the shaft is an impeller, which is housed inside a volute, the protective casing surrounding the impeller, and which acts as a guide for the water being forced out of the impeller by the spinning centrifugal force. Some shafts extend all the way from the motor through the impeller, while other pumps use a coupling to match up the motor shaft with the impeller pump shaft. Two separate shafts meeting with a coupling that attaches them together. The shaft passes into the pump casing and is usually made of stainless steel or high carbon steel. The shaft is supported by bearings. Impellers come in various configurations including closed, semi-open, and open. The impeller shown here is of the semi-open type, which means it has a shroud on the backside only. If you missed our previous video on pump charts, check that video out to see how impellers are chosen to meet system design conditions. The outer casing of the pump is called the volute and directs the water exiting the impeller to the outlet. The stuffing box contains either a mechanical seal or packing to prevent the leakage of water from around the shaft. The packing is made of fiber and lubricated with graphite or Teflon. With the impeller surrounded by water and the impeller rotating, the water gets thrown outwards in all directions. The water leaving the impeller encounters the volute while creating a low pressure region at the suction inlet where more water is sucked in. The discharge pressure will be higher than the suction pressure, causing the fluid to flow around the system. So where are pumps used? Pumps are used for chilled water. You can see here the chilled water pump. It's an end suction pump. It's coming in, being discharged in through the chiller, out of the chiller, and to the system. Same on the heating hot water. You got an end suction pump. You got the hot water coming in, being discharged through the impeller, into the boiler, out of the boiler, into these fan coil units. And then on the condenser water, you have condenser water and suction pump. It's sucking water from the basin of the cooling tower, through the pump, through the impeller, out the discharge, into the chiller, and then out of the chiller to the top of the tower. So you have three different systems using the centrifugal pumps, you have the condenser water, chilled water, and heating hot water. The three most common systems you'll find in HVAC. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.